What is nuclear physics? So to put it quite simply, nuclear physics is the study of the atomic nucleus. However, it is quite distinct from the branch of physics that deals with atomic physics or atomic and molecular physics because in that branch uh, we basically study the behavior of atoms, atomic structures and the interactions of atoms with each other. In nuclear physics we go a level deeper, we go into the nucleus of an atom. This branch of physics as a distinct branch emerged around 100 years or so ago uh, with certain very historic discoveries that took place at that point in time. For example, the discovery of radioactivity by Henry Becquerel in 1895. Post that discovery, a lot of research was done uh, in radioactivity by Marie Curie, Perry Curie and Rutherford that revealed that radioactivity as a phenomena was very much different from other kinds of chemical phenomena which were being observed till that point in time. So for example in radioactivity when some material undergoes radioactive decay uh, that material undergoes change in the elemental nature of itself. So the very element that makes up that material undergoes change. So that was quite new and it was very different from chemical processes uh, that were understood that, till that point in time. Later on there was a the discovery of the electron by J.J. Thomson which revealed that atom itself had some kind of a structure. Till that point in time we had no idea what was the structure of an atom if at all the atom could be broken into pieces. So J.J. Thomson's discovery of the electron revealed that atom is made up of particles like electrons and it has some kind of an internal structure of its own. Following that, around 1905, there was the uh, series of papers published by Albert Einstein. Uh, one groundbreaking uh, discovery which came out of that was that of the idea of the mass energy equivalence principle, which said that energy and matter are equivalent uh, and it is given by the equation E is equal to mc square. This equation is going to play a huge role in nuclear physics later on. Five years after that, around 1910 to 11, a group of scientists led by Ernest Rutherford and his students were Giger and Marsden, they performed a series of experiments in which they bombarded a gold foil with uh, certain kinds of alpha particles. And they looked at the trajectories of the, those alpha particles and they found that vast majority of those alpha particles went undeviated while few of those alpha particles experienced huge amounts of deviation. From a series of such kind of experiments, Rutherford gave uh, the famous theory which is known as the planetary model of the atom. So for the first time, uh, the atom was was compared to that of the planetary model of the solar system. So in the solar system you have the sun and the planets revolve around the sun. In the same way Rutherford said that the atom has electrons which revolve around what is known as a very tiny but very dense positively charged nucleus. So since then on the, you also had the discovery of the neutron by James Chadwick. You had the uh, Yukawa's theory of nuclear forces which tried to explain how nuclear forces hold the nucleus together and lots of other things that created a very distinct branch of physics which is today known as the nuclear physics. So in this video I want to give a little bit of a summary explaining the different sort of aspects and the topics associated with a course in nuclear physics as such. Because nuclear physics has uh, different kinds of topics associated with it. You have the theoretical aspects of nuclear physics, you have the experimental aspects of nuclear physics. So the study in nuclear physics mostly deals with or it can be divided uh, in two parts. The theoretical aspects which deals with the study of the nucleus, the nuclear models, the nuclear reactions and the experimental aspects which deals with the development of technologies, uh, much more powerful and powerful technologies that can induce different kinds of nuclear reactions so that we can study the nuclear properties in the first place. So I can divide the study or a course in nuclear physics in these two parts. So one aspect of this uh, theoretical study of nuclear physics deals with studying different kinds of nuclear properties. What is the size of the nucleus? What is the mass of a nucleus? What is its charge? What is its spin? What is the angular momentum? What is the magnetic moment? And so on and so forth. So the different kinds of properties that explain that can explain the behavior and different phenomena associated with a nucleus. The next deals with nuclear models. So the nuclear models deals with trying to create models that can explain the different kinds of nuclear properties and phenomena associated with nuclear physics. So for example, uh, if you look at the solar system, uh, 
uh, you have the sun, you have the planets revolving around the sun. To explain the large scale behavior of the planets, the sun and the solar system, all you need to do is you need to understand the theory of gravitation. That's it. And if you understand the theory of gravitation, you will have, an, at least to a large extent, you'll be able to explain why the solar system is the way it is. However, nuclear physics is a little bit different. You do not have a complete theory as such, but rather you have many different theories or rather many different models, I think the right word would be many different models that can explain different kinds of behaviors and phenomena associated with uh, uh, the nucleus. For example, you have the liquid drop model, you have the Fermi gas model and you have the shell model. So the liquid drop model compares the nucleus to that of a drop of a liquid and then tries to explain uh, the binding energy of a nucleus. The Fermi gas model compares all the particles existing inside a nucleus to that of particles in a Fermi gas and then tries to explain uh, the depth of the potential of a nucleus. It tries to explain why beta decay happens, why there are almost equal number of protons and neutrons inside a nucleus. And in the third case, the shell model structure, it tries to explain uh, uh, how the particles uh, inside the nucleus exist, or rather how it exists inside a central potential field. And then it tries to explain the uh, existence of nuclear shells. So in atoms, you have electrons which exist in certain energy levels or certain shell structure. In the same way, in the nucleus also, nuclear particles exist in their own shells. And certain filled shells lead to much, much more stable uh, configurations. The shell model tries to explain the existence of magic numbers and such kind of models. So the nuclear physics also deals with studying these kind of different models that can explain certain phenomena and properties associated with nucleus. Another very important aspect of nuclear physics also deals with the study of radioactivity. When I say radioactivity, it deals with two things. First of all, radioactivity as a statistical process. So when I say radioactivity as a statistical process, it deals with the decay law, it deals with half-life, decay constant, uh, uh, and all these things uh, which are very much distinct from the uh, elemental nature of the uh, uh, material present. That means it does not depend on which material is undergoing radioactive decay. The sort of statistical process itself is the same for all kinds of materials undergoing radioactive decay. So that is one aspect aspect of radioactivity and the other aspect of radioactivity deals with the kinds of radioactive decay processes like studying alpha decay, studying beta decay, different kinds of beta decay like positron emission, electron capture and inverse beta decay processes, gamma decay processes and trying to explain why they happen in the first place. So a great challenge is to explain why these different decay processes happens using the different kinds of models that we have. So radioactivity is, occupies a great uh, portion of uh, course in nuclear physics also. But radioactivity is a kind of a nuclear reaction, a nuclear disintegration which happens spontaneously. There are other kinds of nuclear reactions also that can be induced artificially in an experiment by bombarding two particles together. So we also have, uh, you can also divide this into nuclear reactions. So the nuclear reactions would involve studying different kinds of nuclear reactions as well as the kinematics associated with different kinds of nuclear reactions. Now initially I talked about uh, the Rutherford scattering experiment in which they uh, scattered or bombarded some alpha particles onto some gold foil. What happens when you increase the energy of those alpha particles? At some point when there is sufficient kinetic energy then these particles can overcome the coulombic field and they can break apart a nucleus or they can combine with a nucleus and create some kind of a nuclear reaction. So with time, with newer and newer technologies, uh, people were able to create experimental setups which were much, much more powerful so that when you bombard two nuclei together, then they can induce artificial nuclear reactions and then you can study those nuclear reactions. So a very important aspect, another aspect of nuclear physics is also associated with the experimental side, which is mostly dealing with development of new technologies that can create better and more powerful tools that can help us in studying different kinds of nuclear properties and behavior. So I can divide the experimental aspect into two fields. So first is you have the accelerators. So accelerators are those kinds of uh, experimental setups 
which can basically provide huge amounts of kinetic energy to an incident nuclei so that it can collide with the target nuclei and it can induce some kind of a nuclear reaction or it can break apart the nucleus into further particles which can then be studied. So different kinds of accelerators and much much more powerful accelerators have developed over time. For example, you have linear accelerators, Van de Graaff generators, cyclotron, synchrotron and so on and so forth. Alongside accelerators, you also have the development of different kinds of nuclear detectors. So, so it is not sufficient to just uh, induce a nuclear reaction. You also need to detect new particles. You need to detect the energy of the particles that emerge out of a nuclear reaction. So development of technology also led to creation of different kinds of uh, nuclear detectors like GM counters, ionization chambers, proportional counters, gas chambers, scintillation detectors, and so on and so forth. So a huge portion of a nuclear course in nuclear physics may mostly deals with the theoretical aspects which studies the properties, the modeling, the nuclear reactions uh, 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 associated with nuclear physics and also the experimental aspects which deals with technologies that can induce nuclear reactions and then detect particles emerging out of those nuclear reactions. Of course there are other aspects of nuclear physics also. For example you have the applications associated with nuclear physics. The applications would range from development of nuclear weapons to uh, nuclear reactors to uh, radioactive carbon dating to uh, magnetic resonance imaging and so on and so forth. You also have uh, the development of a completely new branch of physics which emerged from nuclear physics. When we developed extremely powerful accelerators that can break apart a nucleus, we went a level further when we could study the particles that make up the nucleus themselves. So that led to another branch of physics emerging out of nuclear physics which is known as the particle physics or high energy physics. So whenever we study nuclear physics, we will also deal with a little bit of particle physics that emerges, uh, the aspects of particle physics that emerges out of nuclear physics. This is all I wanted to talk about basically because I am uh, going to start a series of lectures in the coming few days where I'm going to upload videos on all of these different topics. So I'm going to upload videos on different kinds of nuclear properties, nuclear models, radioactivity, different kinds of nuclear reactions, different kinds of accelerators, different kinds of detectors and um, hopefully even uh, videos on elementary particle physics. And if you are interested in nuclear physics, you can uh, follow this video and the coming videos and uh, learn something from it. When I'm done with all these videos, I'm going to make a list of all of these videos and I'm going to put it in the description. So till then, I hope you have got a brief idea what, of what nuclear physics consists of. And if you're interested in learning more, then uh, hope to see you soon.